It is NFL Draft Week, so it's time to talk draft sleepers. You're going to get Luke and I's favorite offensive and defensive sleepers. But first, we're going to be joined by Locked on HBCU host Darian Gray to talk about some of the names you might not have heard yet, but you need to know now and will remember in the future. we got all that coming up for you on today's episode of Locked on NFL. You are Locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome in. It is Tuesday here on Locked On NFL. Thanks so much for making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day here as a proud part of Locked On Podcast Network. It is Tuesday, so you've got... Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on Twitter, daily host of the Locked on Vikings podcast. And myself, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, daily host of, yep, you guessed it, the Locked on Saints podcast. I figure Nola <laughs> kind of gives it away, you know, <laughs> NFL leaves it a little bit broader, but no. Yeah, true. Gives it away. <laughs> true. I wanted to leave my <laughs> options open in case I want to do a right. band in this stupid team. Yeah, and I can't change <laughs> my Twitter handle anymore because I'll lose my verification badge. So... <laughs> <laughs> this is just what I do now. This is who I am. Well, we're glad to be here with you for another episode of Locked on NFL. Today, we're going to go through some draft sleepers on the offensive and defensive side. But first, like I said, we're going to get to some of those names that you might not know right now, right? Some of these small school mm-hmm. guys that you might not know right now, the small school syndrome that kind of takes over the NFL draft every year. Luke, last year, zero HBCU prospects were drafted in the NFL draft. Really? This year, yes. This year... That is going to change. And to help us out with naming some of the players that are going to help lead that change, which should actually be quite a few of the HBCU players, is locked on HBCU host Darian Gray. Darian, mouth of the South. Thank you for coming (laughs) on, man. We appreciate you being here. A.K.A. the mouth of the South. And listen, I think that there have been very few HBCU players drafted over the last couple of years. I think we want to see a pretty good uptick in that in the next couple of years. But this year in particular, we're going to see probably five to seven guys, in my opinion, get drafted in the NFL draft. Anything above that, that's a real good success for HBCUs. That's land yap right there. (laughs) That's land yap. (laughs) That is land yap right there. All right. So you say five to seven guys coming out of HBCUs this year. Now, I, I have to ask you about one guy in specific, in particular. Luke and I both have like specific guys we want to ask you about, mm-hmm. and then we'll hit a couple of other players. But you, you know I have to bring up fam you. Yes. I got to bring up safety Marquise Bell, our guy, as we decided yes. the last yes, time you visited decided. over at Locked on Saints. Tell us a little bit about safety Marquise Bell, who should be going in this year's draft. Man, Marquise Bell, to me, is a special talent. And somebody that I think we spoke about it on Locked on Saints in a sense of he's really good against the run. And he showed that this year with most of his impact being closer to the line of scrimmage. But because there was a heavy emphasis on exposure this year, a lot of people missed what he did before this year. And prior to this year, when Florida A&M was still in the MEAC, he was one of the better ball hawks in that conference. So you're looking at a guy who excels close to the line of scrimmage and a guy who led his conference in interceptions the year prior. So what may seem as just a box safety, I completely hate that term, but People know what I mean when I say it. So a Mm -hmm. box safety, uh, that's not all he is. He's somebody who I think has positional versatility. And if you're going to put him back there, probably in a two safety set or more of a cover two or a cover four set for him, I think that would be best. And he really really gives you a lot, man. He's a hard hitter. He plays football how I used to like football being played. You know, he he wants to come through and lay the wood. Like, I, I really do appreciate his game. I wanted to ask you about, I want to stick with the secondary and ask you about um, Joshua Williams out of uh, Fayetteville State. Because I feel like guys with really generic names get overlooked a lot by the media because they their names don't pop off out of lists. This will like, be I the like only one of these we talk about today, by the way. I have the exact <laughs> yeah. same theory about another player we'll talk about later. <laughs> but I don't, I've been a big fan of this guy. Um, I feel like I'm like 50 spots higher on him than consensus. But tell me about him. He has one of the more interesting paths to me. I think it's been since either it's been it's been a long time since a guy from Fayetteville State was drafted. I can't remember the exact year, but just know it's been a while. And Joshua Williams not only has a chance. I listen, I've watched a lot of Chuck Barkley, and I know that I should never use guarantee. 
but he feels almost like a guarantee to come out and get drafted, man. This guy has, is so talented, and his path to the to the NFL draft was really cemented with the senior bowl. He got the Jim Nagy uh, co-sign where Nagy was like, man, this is the guy. And it's interesting because when you compare him to a guy like Marquise Bell, not stylistically, but the way that Nagy responded to Bell as opposed to Williams – Nagy kind of stamped this guy as the best HBCU defensive back to come out this year. I just looked it up because you said it. Uh, Fayetteville State has not had a draft pick since the 16th round of the 1976 NFL draft, James Godwin. And we don't even have 16 rounds anymore. You could go to no. draft <laughs> where we get to 16 rounds. Like, <laughs> like just to hammer that home. Like that, that guy yeah. would be a undrafted, undrafted free agent. Like right. that's just how, how long it's been. Just to hammer that home, 16 rounds. Like, come on. I don't even know That's 16 incredible. rounds. <laughs> so we've got we've got two defenders that we put on the list so far. What offensive players stand out to you that are worth watching and names to know going into the NFL draft this year? You're going to have a Quill Glass, of course. Um, he's a quarterback. I'm kind of on the fence on whether or not he gets drafted. Um, he he had He's had a really good pre-draft showing. Unfortunately, it didn't culminate in a great legacy bowl. And it's really, really tough because that really was a an example of how good the defensive lines at HBCUs are, specifically in the MEAC with guys like Deshaun Dixon, but we're focused on the offensive side of the ball right now. I, I kind of want to go with some lesser named guys like a Marquise McClain out of Southern or a, a Keith Corbin out of Jackson State. Both of these guys are more big body receivers. Some people think that McClain could be a, a tight end or a big slot. And then Keith Corbin is a really good run after the catch guy who did it both at Jackson State and then also at University of Houston. And if I had to get one guy who I think would be a real sleeper, like not just the fact of being from an HBCU, but a sleeper amongst those ranks, I think it would be Ezra Gray out of Alabama State because Ezra mm -hmm. Gray has special team capability that can get you on the field immediately. See, it's, it's great to be a good player. It's great. But when you have something like special teams that you know you can get on the field rather quickly, and they don't mind putting some later round guys on special teams, maybe as a punt return if he shows that, you know, I think that that could get him on the field right away. And you can really know, oh, we know this guy from Alabama State. Very nice. Very I, nice. That's all I had to say. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I love that you talked a little bit about special teams because obviously that's the quickest way, as you mentioned, yeah. for some of these guys to make their way to these rosters. Any other players that you're looking at that are worth you know paying attention to from that? I, I think one of the guys that I know for sure that I'm going to be watching to see if he goes off the board is Southern Shatire Carter. Uh, the offensive lineman. Uh, Jermaine Martin is another guy, right? The young running back who's got some good speed. Any of those other players that we should be keeping an eye out on? Yeah, I think that Carter is a guy who I, I feel pretty confident he's going to get drafted. I think that the four HBCU players who, who went to the combine, that's Bell, like we named, Williams, uh, Carter, and then Dakobe Durant, I think that they're all four going to get drafted. Um, did you say on the offense or defense of the ball, side of the ball? Did you no, either, either side, either side. Okay, um, I'll give two for each then. I'll give two for each. Um, I can't get out of here without saying Keyshawn James. I don't think he's going to get drafted, but he's a defensive lineman out of – Fayetteville State, he's a teammate with Joshua Williams. And even with Joshua Williams on the team, he won CIAA Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, had 23 tackles for a loss and just continuously got better every year. Um, in addition to him, I want to talk about James Houston, who has a lot of positional versatility. I think that he could be a, a really good 3-4 outside linebacker just as far as size goes with the ability to play with his hand in the dirt. I know he wouldn't do that in a 3-4. But then also he'd be an off-ball linebacker. I just think that versatility would mesh with him really well, maybe as an edge guy. And then on the offensive side of the ball, um, I'm going to go with Jermaine Martin. Definitely have to mention him because I love explosive running backs. He's done that on a consistent basis. And then we already named Carter. Let's see. Let me get a second one out here. I'll go with Joshua Wilkes. This is the, I'll go with another guy who I haven't heard much buzz about as far as a, a player. But Joshua Wilkes is a phenomenal deep threat in – Guys with specialties, they make teams. They can be effective. If I know you can go deep and you're really good at it, there's a place on my roster for you. Ross, there's a place on the roster for that yes. guy in New Orleans. Yes. <laughs> a guy who can specialize in going in going deep. So those specialty guys can get you, you know, get you a, mm -hmm. a roster spot. 
especially if they can gun or they can cover kickoffs and stuff like yeah. that's really like that. And that's an underrated thing that I don't think we get in a lot of scouting reports. Um, I agree. Look, if y'all want to hear more from Darian, hear more about HBCUs, listen to Locked On HBCU um, on Daily Show, just like this one. Check it out wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Uh, thank you so much, Darian. Thank you for having me, man. I, I hope that we get five to seven, maybe eight HBCUs uh, player drafted and I get to come on here again and talk to you guys at some point. So before we move on to the next one, let me talk to you about Athletic Greens, specifically AG1, a product both Ross and I are taking every single day. 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens that help your gut help, health, health, help your energy, help you focus, all of that great stuff. So I'm going to make it easy for you. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Now I got to also update you all on some bet online odds. This is the time Ooh. where it all goes crazy. Oh, Suddenly yeah. overnight over Sunday night, early Monday morning, a crap ton of money came into all the markets and set Travon Walker as the odds on favorite to be the number one overall pick. So I got in at bet online at plus 165 on Travon nice. Walker. <laughs> but if you still wanted to get in, you can still get him at like minus 125 or something like that. But I have something to think about. <laughs> if you want to bet on the draft or basketball playoffs, hockey playoffs coming up, uh, MMA fights, golf, tennis. You can even play your favorite Vegas casino games. Find it all at betonline.net. You can build player props and wacky parlays. You can bet in the middle of games using their live betting apparatus. You can do anything you can dream of over there. You can even bet on like really wacky props and stuff. All sorts of great stuff over at betonline.net where the game starts. All right, everybody, continuing on with today's episode of Locked On NFL. Thank you so much again for being here with us and making us your first listen of the day every day. Hey, make sure that you are subscribed here on that Locked On NFL YouTube page because Thursday, Friday, Saturday, live coverage, three days, seven rounds of the entire NFL draft here on Locked On NFL over on the YouTube page. You can also check out our Ultimate Mock Draft, which was released on the Ultimate Mock Draft 2022 feed, as well as the Locked On NFL podcast feed. All six episodes have released since last week. All 32 first-round selections, and even those teams mm -hmm. that didn't get to pick in the first round got to talk about their first pick. So it was a lot of fun. Some we of us drafted twice. Some of some yes, both of us did. In fact, and 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 Squid. someone. <laughs> <laughs> someone made a lot of people mad about doing it. So you'll have to. Oh, I pissed part. off the experts. <laughs> Come listen to my spicy moves. <laughs> it's all, it was a ton of fun, but no, make sure you go and check it out. It was a ton of fun. And it's pretty incredible. Like just to see what we're able to do here across the network. It, in our when the home. whole thing comes people, together, it's it, the power. Right. And, Right. Michael Irving saying that he likes our picks and stuff like that. Like, it's just, yeah. it's just pretty dope. It's pretty dope. So Very lots cool. of good stuff. So go and check that out wherever you get your podcast. Uh, but here for this podcast, we're going through draft sleepers. We're going to start on the defensive side because everyone else starts on the offensive side. You come to this podcast for something different, which is why you get Luke and I on Tuesdays. And so we're going to give you something different. <laughs> we are different. So we're going to... <laughs> we're going to start with defense. Um, Luke, we got a lot of secondary to talk about here. So let's start this one off. Kick us off with your first sleeper over on the defensive side in this year's NFL draft. Yep, I'm going to sleeper with a little known school called the University of Alabama. Uh, not a lot of people talk about it. Um, no, he's a late round dude. Nick it's Josh Job. It's the corner. <laughs> Nick Sabin. Uh, yeah, Nick it's a Sabin. defensive coordinator with some interesting ideas. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's Josh Job. So... Josh Job was supposed to be a really big prospect coming out this year, and he totally bombed mm -hmm. his senior season. And I'm not here to tell you that that senior season was a lie. I am here to tell you that this is absolutely the kind of guy that you want as a developmental corner. Um, somebody with a lot to learn. What happened in his, his senior season is a lot of technical flaws got exposed, um, and he, you know, there's a little more tape on him or something like that. And he picked up bad habits and stuff. And you got to work that out of him. There is assembly required. There's work to do, but he has the athletic profile. He's an Alabama rec recruit. He's got that coachability and all that stuff. But here's the deal. 
He's a buck 80 and he fights like scrappy do. And that's what I want in my Love corners. I, I want corners with a dog mentality. I say it every year, give me your, um, you know, give me your, your completely unhinged. I don't want my corners to have a good grip on reality. And, and, and it's important <laughs> playing corner so many times playing corner. You have to aggressively do something, whether it's employ a technique, jump on the ball, do something with the utmost confidence and any hesitation, you get absolutely destroyed. So yep. I would rather take confidently bad than hesitantly good when it comes mm. to cornerback, if, it, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, it, like hesitation is a death knell and he won't hesitate. That's why I like him as like a sixth round guy. Love that. Love that. Yeah, he was somebody that like in the way too early mock drafts after last year's draft, that mm. was a round one selection. And now here we are talking about him as a potential day three pick uh i'm gonna come in here with another player in the secondary i'm going with somebody that i think is really interesting so dane brugler has him listed as his 10th ranked safety but he played almost exclusively on the outside at corner in college alante taylor the corner mm -hmm. who i think will transition to safety in the nfl i don't think that that is a um an unwarranted like like transition that people are starting to make for him i think it'll work really well for him and there's specific reasons why so alante taylor tennessee let's call him defensive back uh, 10th ranked safety over at Dane Brugler's uh, big board. So he's six foot, 199 pounds, ran a four, three, uh, four, three, six, 40. So he's in that four, three area. He's got good speed, all of that. He's blocked punts. He's had fumble recoveries, go back for touchdowns. He was a former wide receiver that transitioned to cornerback. But Luke, you want to know my favorite thing about Alante Taylor is what's your he favorite played, thing? He played baseball and he was an outfielder. Literally That's center fielder safety. Yeah, exactly. And I <laughs> love that. I love that, right? Because what do you need to do that, right? You have to have range, right? You have to have speed, and you have to have good ball tracking skills. And he is that really, angle re instinct, yes. yeah. Right. And he's a really, really good tracker. Now, angles in the run game. Not as strong, but that's okay because you're putting him furthest away from the ball if you're moving him to a safety spot. But he could be a potential guy that comes in and converts to a deep safety kind of um, free roaming center fielder, to use that same phrase again. That just gives him the opportunity to be a little bit of a ball hawk and, and maybe put together some of the, uh, the ball production that you saw get better and better every year. Two passes defense in, in 2018, went up to four, went up to five, went up to eight, finished with 19 in his career career interceptions one in each of the last three seasons and two actually last year so you watch the ball production go up you see the tracking skills all those things that are a little bit kind of like those tangible intangibles if that makes sense like range which is just like a combination yeah. of tangible things that we use in an intangible way he's got all of them yeah you know the guy the king of this through all of history i'm going to make all the old vikings fans really happy here Oh, the guy it. that is known for this throughout history, that skill, that ball tracking, that angles thing. Interception record holder, career interception record holder, Paul Krause from back in the 70s. That is how I, he did it. Yeah. One of my absolute favorite Madden cards. He's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of ball hawking safeties, I also picked uh, a ball hawking safety. JT yes. Woods out of Baylor. He's probably going to be like a fourth oh. rounder. And I think I think he's going to outproduce that because this dude, for one, he's got like breakaway speed. He's going to be able to cover a crap ton of range. He's really he knows what he's looking at. and He knows when to break on the ball. And it's very instinctive. He's he's feeling not thinking, I think. Mm -hmm. And that can actually get him in a little bit of trouble. And I think the reason he's not going to be like a first round pick or anything like that is because there's too many instances of that kind of being preyed upon and him falling for something or going the wrong way and not really having the agility to like bring it back. But he has I think he got like eight or nine interceptions um, in his last, like it was insane. And so he's mm -hmm. extremely productive and in a way you can absolutely use. I love this dude as a backup safety where sure. if he's your starter every week and there's a ton of tape on him, he's going to get exposed. But if he has to come in for, you know, a quarter because somebody sprained their ankle, he's, hey, why don't you just go in and make a quick play on the ball and suddenly our yeah. backup safety gets a pick. Like that's the kind of thing that I love him for. And then, you know, I red shirt him as that backup and hopefully he can develop into something more down the line. Um, but I really, really like the athletic profile of JT Woods and just the style of play that he has, that same sort of ball hawk. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I know that there's not much to love when it comes to defense in the Big 12, but Baylor secondaries <laughs> are mad athletic, like crazy yeah. athletic. And so I think he checks that box along with Jalen Petre, who's going to be coming out of there as well. 
All right, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm all right. I'm gonna wrap us up on the defensive side in the trenches. I'm gonna take us down to the big uglies. Um, we're gonna go with Wisconsin defensive tackle Matt Henningsen. Now Matt Henningsen may very well go undrafted in this draft. It is very very possible. He is Dane Brugler's 26th ranked defensive tackle uh, with the sort of out uh, forecast of a priority free agent. But here's why I like Matt Henningsen. Um, he Six foot three, 289 pounds. So, you know, he could beef up a little bit, redshirt senior, but he's still one of those guys that would probably fit in pretty well as like a, you know, a three tech pass rusher kind of guy, right? That would be his whole shtick. And when you look at the numbers, he, he didn't, uh, I don't have a 40 yard time for him, but I have a 10 yard split for him, 1.75 seconds. But here's the thing that I love on top of all this six foot three, 289 pounds. 37 and a half inch vertical jump with a nine foot 11 inch broad jump. This guy is explosive. Does he have get up? Yes. Yeah. He gets it could be a little bit better. The, yeah. It could be a little bit better, right? He, he, he it, 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 it comes down to like trusting the, um, trusting the instinct, mm-hmm. you know, trusting his instinct so that he actually gets off on the snap as opposed to second guessing himself. That's the thing that usually kind of gears him back. It's that same thing you talked about before in terms of like hesitation versus like confidence, like be confident mm-hmm. and wrong. So like I'll take the false start penalty right. as long as you can come back and correct it a few plays later. And right. he has the ability to be able to do that. If he could just kind of get the instinct part down, he was also on uh, Bruce Feldman's freak list. And I think you see why I, I think you see very why. nice. So I, I'm, I'm excited about this guy. I want to see what happens with him. Yeah, that's sneaky. How Kayvon Thibodeau won a lot of reps. So when you find that kind of mm-hmm. thing, um, that it can be really cool if he can like learn how to time the snap count too, and you know do that tape study. Um, yeah. We're gonna move over to the offensive side of the ball in a second. Get you some sleepers over there. Uh, but first, let me talk to you about taking care of your car. RockAuto.com is a great place to get all sorts of car parts. If you're a do-it-yourself type gearhead, um, you can get just about anything under the sun there. But if you're just an average Joe, there's still stuff on Rock Auto that like you might not have in your car. You should have in your car, like a tire kit. Or if you live in a snowy place, an ice scraper, um, jumper cables, that kind of thing. You can find that stuff at RockAuto.com as well. And you're going to find it cheaper than uh, the, the brick and mortar auto stores. And it'll get delivered right to your door. So save yourself a trip as well. So whatever it is that you buy at rockauto.com, just make sure you enter your make your year and your model so they can get you something that's compatible with your car that fits and uh, get it directly shipped right to your door. Why pay 30, 50, even 100% more at one of these brick and mortar joints when Rock Auto can take care of you? They've been doing this forever online. They're a family company. They're going to do you right. So head on over to rockauto.com. Whatever it is that you buy, make sure you let them know in the how you heard about a section that Locked On sent you. Rock Auto, amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. All right, everybody, wrapping up today's episode of Locked on NFL. Going through our sleepers, it is NFL Draft Week. Luke is finally here. We did it. We made it. It's the NFL Draft Week, which is like one of my favorite times. And I love the the process of getting up to the NFL Draft, but I love even more post-draft where everyone's an all-pro. It's just so much fun during all that time. So we're talking about some of these guys that are going to be those sleepers that your team might get really excited about, that fan bases might get really excited about if they see those names get called, that aren't like those top names that you're going to hear. Now, if you want to hear more sleepers that you didn't hear us name, Make sure you check out Friday's episode. Q and Chris gave some of theirs back on Friday, as well as some of the stars of the draft. Lock on HBCU has a sleeper segment coming out the same day, Tuesday, over on Locked on HBCU. Mm -hmm. Thanks again to Darian Gray for joining us earlier on in the show. And, of course, make sure you check out the Locked on NFL Draft podcast wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. Luke, we did defense. Now let's talk about – oh, yeah, you've got one over at Locked on Vikings. Vikings. I did 35 in under 30 minutes. Oh, Wow. That's impressive. Yep. All right, go check out Locked yep. Vikings, everybody. That's pretty incredible. And then I breathed um, once. <laughs> <laughs> As the episode was over. Um, yeah. All right, so we did, we did defense. Kick us off when it comes to offense. Which offensive players are your sleepers in this one? All right, this dude is the most, like, my guy, my guy ever. I'm so obsessed with Danny Gray out of SMU. I love this he, dude. I mean, yeah. How about 6'2", 40, I Yikes. believe? Yikes. Come on, that rules. Yikes. And so here's his deal, too, because he kind of came up out of nowhere. And the reason he came up out of nowhere is he was recruited and he actually had an offer, I think, from Memphis. It was a power five school. He had an mm-hmm. offer, 
Grades didn't check out, had to do the JUCO thing for two years. And then coming out of JUCO, he had offers from like Florida and Tennessee. And he was like the number three receiver coming out of JUCO. And he decided to stay close to home and go to SMU instead. So uh, this dude is a small school guy, but not because of the limitations. You know, usually you hear small school guy and you think, well, why didn't the big schools recruited him? Oh, they did. He just didn't pick them. Um, and that I think is hurting his draft stock more than anything. The dude is fast. He can run routes. He's big. He can get open. He's probably gotten himself to a fourth ish round draft stock because he Mm -hmm. overtook Reggie Roberson at SMU, um, who was supposed to kind of be wide receiver one there in 2021. And Danny Gray came out of nowhere and sort of took all those targets and earned them. Um, this dude is, I mean, you're buying, you're getting it on the ground floor. You're buying at the right time with him. And if I can get him in the fourth round, I would be super stoked on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a great one. That's a great selection. Uh, I'm going to stick with wide receiver. I'm going to the SEC, Tennessee wide receiver, Vellis Jones Jr., Dane Brugler's 25th ranked wide receiver, 5'11", 204 pounds, redshirt senior, has been in school for a long time. For those of you that care about breakout age, for those of you that care about how old a player will be when he hits the field for the first time in the NFL, Vellis Jones Jr. will be 25 years old by the time that he hits the uh, <laughs> time he hits the NFL. So okay. what he is is what he will be, right? So you uh-huh. have to draft him into a system where he's already going to fit. Think Van Jefferson in that way, right? Like Van mm-hmm. Jefferson hit a system that he, he, that works for right. him with the Los Don't Angeles expect Rams. him to become more. Right, exactly, exactly. So this is a guy, okay, he's 25 years old coming out of college. Why? Okay, so he was redshirted in 2016, 2017, 18, and 19. He was with USC. Then he transferred to Tennessee in 2020 and then wrapped up with Tennessee in 2021. So here's one of my favorite things to talk about when it comes to Velas Jones Jr. Besides the fact that he's 5'11", 204 pounds, which is good NFL size, also ran a 4'3", so he's got that NFL long speed as well. 33-inch uh, vertical jump, 10-foot, 1-inch broad jump. So the, the explosiveness can be there, but it's not like out of there. But here's the thing that I love. Six receptions for 35 yards in 2019, but he made second team all Pac-12 in 2019 how do you do that luke just you you got it you tell me i don't have any guesses you don't have any guesses kick returning 100 yard kick oh there it is so he's got the special teams part right this is what we talked about earlier right you find Mm -hmm. the athlete who can find a role as a special team right he did that it was second team all pro as a kick returner uh for our second team all pack 12 sorry uh as a kick returner he had a 100 yard kickoff return for a touchdown in 2019 2020 when he transferred over to the sec he led the sec in kick return yards and then in 2021 62 catches 807 yards for seven touchdowns while also being the co-special teams player of the year in the sec this guy checks the boxes right in terms of what you're looking for for a day three receiver who might be older i'm not gonna say old because i'm 32 you know what i'm saying but (laughs) but but, (laughs) he's a little older but he's absolutely got a role wherever he ends up that's awesome yeah that's that's the way it has to go right you have to see the path forward with some of these guys that have more um that that have you know potential uh, yeah. and with guys that need to carve out their role and that might take time to kind of figure out where he, where he is and what he's good at and all that stuff. Um, you need to have something in the meantime so you can like make the team, especially if you're going to be a draft sleeper, if you're a six round pick, you're not guaranteed to make the team, you know? Um, but I'm going to go a, a little higher with, uh, Joshua Ezeudu from UNC. He it, played mostly left guard for UNC, but he also filled in at tackle. He gives you that scheme versatility. He's Big. He's 6'4", 313. That's awesome guard size, especially in a zone scheme, which is what my Vikings are going to run mostly. And I don't know, half of the other teams in the NFL. Um, And he fits that. The reason he's going to fall this far is mainly rawness. Um, He doesn't have a lot of experience and it kind of shows. And um, he's got a lot of discipline issues with holding penalties and stuff. He gets a little grabby. He can get a little panicky when he gets beat. Um, And so you kind of have to iron all that stuff out of him. It's a little bit of a developmental guy, but it's also the kind of guy that can be a swing backup. And it's like, hey, look, if our left tackle's injured, this isn't ideal anyways. And this guy can at least come in and get some reps. Um, But I just I just love that size, that reach and stuff like that. When you're, you know, 313 pounds and stuff and you can have a Mm -hmm. bit of a length advantage on some, you know, 345 pound nose tackle with T-Rex arms, which a lot of these guys are kind of small and stout and they're leverage guys. Right. Um, you have that reach advantage. I can really help you in that phone booth. 
I love that. I love that. I'm going to follow you up here with another offensive lineman. There's going to be a lot of talk about the trenches in this year's draft, of course, both in the offensive and defensive line. There's a lot of, you know, conversation around tackles and how early they're going to go off the board, things like that. So, you know, the top four tackles in this year's class, Iki Iquono, uh, Evan Neal out of Alabama, and then you would probably have Charles Cross up there and then very likely maybe like Trevor Penning out of Northern Iowa yeah. potentially is like up there for you as well. And then Bernard Raymond's in there somewhere too, but he's, you know, late in his career, he started playing offensive mm-hmm. tackle and then he's already like going to be 24 years old by the time he comes to the NFL. So what can you really Yeah, you kind of get to the glut of like the mid-round dudes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And a part of that kind of mid-round glut, if I can use that word uh, with you, uh, would be Dane Brugler's eighth ranked offensive tackle. It's Abraham Lucas, who I think is a mm. part of the plain name club. He's Maybe. one of those guys. He's one of those guys. Now, he's going to be like a third round, fourth round selection. But like media wise, he's not being talked about a lot because of the same thing that I think you shared earlier about like sometimes the names are just too plain. Six foot six, 315 pounds, fantastic size for a guard. 37 and 7 eighths inch arms. So he's right over that 33, excuse me, 33 and 7 eighths inch arms. Uh, so he's right over that 33 inch threshold there. Uh, 49240. So good speed. Moves mm-hmm. around well, does a lot of stuff well. But here's yeah, here's the other five thing. for a big guy like that. Mm-hmm. And I just like the raw numbers too. Zero sacks allowed in 2021 at right tackle. So if your team is looking for a right tackle, which if you're maybe let's say you have a left-handed quarterback and you want to protect the blind side, or you just simply want to get a yeah right, um, <laughs> or you know you just simply have. And you're looking for the, the bookend to complement your left tackle, or you might have a versatile right tackle now that can move to left tackle, like, you know, a team that I might know a little bit about, uh, then that he makes a lot of sense as a guy that you could potentially come in, have him play at his natural position where he's comfortable and still be able to help improve and make your offensive line better. Zero sack slot at right tackle, 477 pass blocking snaps. That was in 2021. He also had uh, only one sack allowed in 2020, only played 183 pass blocking snaps, but 780 in 2019, three sacks allowed, 749 in 2018, zero sacks allowed. And the guy has allowed six career pressures <laughs> so far. Sorry, excuse me, six career yeah. hits so far. My apologies, but still 39 career hurries. So he's really, really effective. I mean, and he has been against some really good Pac-12 pass rushers over the course of the past few years as well. Now, the big thing with him is going to be penalties. Five penalties last year, zero the year before that, one the year before that, five the year before that. So, you know, the, you kind of bookended there with two pretty heavily penalized years. But Get him into the system and he ends up being somebody that, you know, you get halfway through the draft and all of a sudden Mm -hmm. can be a long term starter for you because he's just going to be good at everything. He's not going to be one of those guys that excels somewhere and then and then lacks somewhere else. He's just good at everything. And sometimes that's exactly what you need in an offensive lineman. Yeah, I I talk a lot on my show about like reactive positions and proactive positions where, you know, Mm -hmm. is your position you're trying to make something happen or you're trying to stop something from happening? And wide receivers try to make something happen. Cornerbacks try to stop something from happening. Tackle is a Mm -hmm. reactive position. And in reactive positions, a lack of weaknesses is a strength. You know, if if you are, if you don't have a major thing that your opponent can attack, that can kind of be the thing that makes you a a good player. And, And hey, look, with that size, even if there are little technique flaws and stuff and stuff you have to iron out, you're betting on tools. Pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, and that's the thing about like the draft right now, right? Like we talked about maybe the media not paying attention to some of these players. When you're talking about traits, once the coaches are involved in this whole process, all of a sudden that's why these guys start climbing up the yeah, board because, because coaches, my guy says I can teach him. Yeah. Traits. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I know y'all have your own sleepers, so send them to us at locked on, uh, at the locked on podcast account at Ross Jackson N O L a at Luke Braun NFL. Let us know who your sleepers are. We want to hear about it. Leave it in the YouTube comments too. If you're watching on YouTube, which you should be subscribed on YouTube. So you can find all of that good live content on actual draft weekend. We are almost here folks. Get excited, get hype. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And then of course, all the stuff that starts, uh, over the weekend. See y'all then on the locked on NFL podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day.